The fever left him yesterday. Horam hebdomen. Okay, hebdomen. It's the seventh hour. Hora hebdomen. This is the sixth, so that's the seventh. Keep in mind, he's getting them wrong intentionally, okay? I know him quite well, and he's quite a bit more clever than he looks. So don't count this against him. O oh, king, you begin to build do decates horas. It have to be the top, because that's the eleventh, the top of the right side of it is the yeah, can you top. see? Can you see any possible problem with that? Well, the sun has already set, so that is a problem. Right, and uh, what did we see um, with the Romans about the twelfth hour? They would just call it sunset, solis or casus. Peri de ten enate in horan, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthan. Around the ninth hour, six, seven, eight, nine, so around the ninth hour. More or less. More or less. An approximation. An approximation. Okay. Now, that is exactly how a translator in the third century made the first translation of this passage into Latin. Um, and it's called the Vetus Latina. And that translator said exactly the same thing. Kirka horam nonam. And all of our modern Bible translations in every language agree with that. And so in English, you get either about the ninth hour or when they translate that into more modern terms, what would that be? About 3 p.m. Right, because that's the ninth hour would be in, in our modern counting, that would be 3 p.m. And that's why Christians around the world, they commemorate the death of Christ at three in the afternoon on Good Friday. And in Catholic countries like Italy and Spain, three o'clock in the afternoon is the most important point in the Good Friday liturgy. Right. right? Now, can you see any problem with this? 